What up? It's DJ Static selecting the show off. And you tuned in to Global Spin 365. First of all, Joey Badass, uh, pro era. When did you know that it was just magic? Like, when did you know that you guys were just literally meant to work the first, together? The was first it song we did. Was it, uh, oh, I was going to ask if it was Dope Front. Because yeah. I know it took you like Don't five minutes. Shipes, Johnny Shipes had asked me, um, if I could do some scratches on Joey's project. So they came over and I did the cuts real quick and he loved them. Dope. And they were like, all right, we out. I was like, bro, you ain't going nowhere. I'm playing beats. And the first beat I played was Don't Front. He's like, put the mic on. And him and CJ did it in one take. And like, I think that moment we were just like, this is going to keep going. That's and, so dope. You know, five years later, here we are. That's so dope. I mean, the the energy between you and just some of the guys with Pro Ari, you got Nick Caution, you got um, Kirk Knight. Um, the energy is just there. So what's been a challenge working with Pro Era? Just, if there is any. There's not really a challenge. It's just sometimes, you know, the, the age difference is quite the, uh, the variable. You know what I mean? Like sometimes when we get in, not arguments, but like the, we, we uh, debate things and it's like, these kids are like 13, 14 years mm -hmm. younger than me. So it's like, I, I try to take their opinions in perspective, but I'm also like the uncle that makes sure they keep the hip hop guidelines you know what i mean right because a lot of a lot of the kids now don't follow the rules i followed growing up and it's why i'm here you know what i mean so i just don't want everything to get lost in the sauce through the years right. where these kids just do whatever they want they don't they don't acknowledge certain things in history you know what i mean right some of these kids are spent i'm not talking about them particularly but some of these new cats are like you know like um like Jay-Z says on the album, he's like, Tupac, <laughs> Tupac Ben had a nose ring. And some of these dudes be acting like they're brand new because they do a certain fashion thing or they say a punchline that's been said 30 years ago. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to just know your history. And uh, besides that, it's, it's all love, man. It's, it's family. I mean, of course. I mean, I think this generation coming up is definitely miseducated on, on just the culture. Absolutely. But that's the OG's faults. It is. Like, really? Yeah, Talk about absolutely. Because I feel like from the after the 90s, people were so comfortable and so many people get money in hip hop that the early 2000s kind of let the soldier boys and let the little bees come up. You know what I mean? Like kind of the... No disrespect to those artists, they both grinded and got their spot, but it's like kind of like dumbed down rap, you know what I mean? And that shit let that shine. It like got out of control to the point now where like, look where we're at. Like if someone's too lyrical now, it's like unpopular. Right. Even though Kendrick's the biggest artist in the world right now, and he's amazing. So when people when people say hip hop's whack right now or like messed up, they're tripping because they got you got Jay Z's albums out. It's amazing. You got right. Kendrick Lamar, J Cole selling out arenas every day. You got Joey Badass. You got all these new cats that are really dope, and it's like there's plenty of new talent. There's plenty of new talent. I also just think that the quote unquote mumble rappers are kind of just like it's just the taking trendy the shine shit. away, right? You know, it's, it's corny that. It's not the, the those rappers' faults, though. It's the people that talk about them. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm a hypocrite because I, I had my part in it. For a long time, I would, uh, like, on my radio show or wherever I'd be, Twitter, I'd talk shit about certain styles of rap. And now I think about it, it's like, I should have just spent that time promoting what I love more because it's like half the people that complain on the Internet don't promote what they actually love. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not obviously a victim of that because I promote everything I love. But show I off. still could have been. It, <laughs> my man Sean C taught me that. Like he was like, "Yo, all the energy that you could put into being negative, like you, like he basically said to me, like we're lucky that we have that we're still here doing this. How many years later? Twenty something years later, we're both lip making. Not even not only making a living, but what's your doing secret really to well. staying relevant though? Because that's not an easy task. Like there's there's like, a method to it. Respecting the youth and also finding new talent. It's like. Mm. I've been a, a major part in a lot of these guys' early careers, and um, that's moving through my whole career from the late 90s to now. The list of people I've helped break is pretty long, so I just think that, and not acting like an old head, even though I get labeled it by some of the kids, but it's like, it's all funny games, but um, right. just staying with your eye on the on the prize, really, and, and nonstop work. I still work harder than when I was 18, you know? Mm, definitely. Um, I want to talk a little bit about eight, your eighth studio album. First of all, I'm happy to hear it because we all thought that the last one, Lucky Seven, was going to be the last project. Uh, Me what? Too. I know. Well, I'm glad it isn't. Thank goodness. What is 
your inspiration behind this. Well, project. it was gonna be my last solo album, like oh. like co compilation style. Gotcha. I didn't say I was gonna stop making albums. That's my my livelihood. Right. But I wanted to do more like artist collabs and stuff. I'm still doing that. Mm -hmm. I think certain fans, because I got like real. I have a lot of underground fans, and I got some of the more mainstream ones. But some of the underground fans are like, oh, here you go, you signed to Rock Nation, and now it's Two Chains and Wiz. It's like, no, I'm progressing as an artist. But guess what? I got West Side and Gun and Conway on the album. I got Voice the Five Nine, Raekwon. Like I could go on and on. Like the album's grimy as fuck. It's just I got some big records on there. Why not? What do you not want me to succeed? Right. You know what I mean? What would you say to an up and comer? who wants to do what you're doing and kind of maintain the, the culture and, and keep it going. Just do your homework. Some That's of these right. generations now act like it's corny to learn. It's like my whole life I wanted to, like every day to, to now, it's like I want to experience something new. I want to know more and more. And I feel like some people just get like okay at something and they're cool with it, including DJs and producers. Like there's some DJs that like, never got better than a chirp scratch and they're just comfortable with that their whole life. It's like, that's corny. Yeah. Static select.